Good evening. My name is Alex, your host for another episode of the Corporate Cowboys podcast. Today is Tuesday, April 19th, the day before 420. The year is 2022. For those of you that are already rolling up, uh, I guess keep it lit, right? Otherwise, back to business. Every day, business as usual, one down, always one more to go type of vibe. You know, some corporate cowboys type shit. Uh, This episode is about... uh, Escaping? Not escaping, really. But negotiating your way out of corporate when you're being coached out of corporate. Right? So, there will be instances uh, when corporate will quote unquote coach you out and for lack of a better term of a more politically correct term they're just firing you dude right the world is a fire at will arena let's call it and uh, i guess if we're being even more politically correct it's the right to work but you know that's just double speak for an employer having the right to fire you at will with or without justification for it. They, you just show up one day and they don't like the look on your fucking face and be like, you know what? Don't come back after lunch or, or you know, <laughs> you know what? Like, as soon as you walk in the door before you even punch in to clock in and work, they can just send your ass home. Until you don't come back, you're fired, you're terminated. Granted, there are some statutes that give employees benefits upon being fired. Unemployment benefits, right? But the crux of it all is the uncertainty of uh, of working. And if you're out of work, you're necessarily not working you're not producing you're not creating i mean that that's all subjective right and that depends that's all circumstantial on what you do with your time off i mean if you get demoted to customer uh you get fired you get terminated you have all the free time in the world to apply to another job to Educate yourself, go out and research, sharpen up some new skills, acquire some new skills, sharpen them up and hone them in order to put them down on your resume for a future position. And it might be on the payroll, it might be an independent contract, and in that way you might be in a better position to negotiate your worth moving up sometimes blessings come disguised sometimes what you might think is a curse might in reality be a blessing in disguise same goes with uh, with the process the process of being let go the process of being terminated and you having to come to grips with the world the outside, the cold. You having to come to grips with how cold, how hard the world is on the individual, the most oppressed minority. That's the individual. That's the creative. That's the human being. And when you come, but when you try to come face to face with corporate, you're dealing with a whole legal being, a a whole other legal entity that's got resources, capital, longevity, it's got a reputation, it has legacy behind it. Who are you? Alex? You're fucking nobody. You don't count. You don't have resources. You don't have reputation. You don't have legacy behind you. You, you, don't, you don't come from a trust fund. 
the fuck do you have? You know what you have? Is potential. You always have potential. And in the process of being let go, don't get emotional about it. You have to recognize that you signed up for the game and the game is a cold bitch. You have to learn to seduce it. You have to learn to game it right. You have to learn and pick up pimp juice, player moves, in order for it to benefit you. In order for your work product to turn around and profit for you. I came across a, uh, uh, an article, and, and I see these every now and then. I was uh, surfing, uh, surfing the webs, and I came across a website that rhymes with credit. And if you haven't visited it yet, I mean, there are certain aspects of it that are absolutely cancerous. But then there are other aspects that that really do stimulate the sociological perspective that I've been able to develop on life. And uh, it, it, it really interests me. It really appeals to me. Having been trained in sociology, organizational studies, mind you, on the West Coast at a, at a, at a fine research university... Having been trained in organizational studies, I'm, I'm able to accumulate, I'm able to do uh, not a deep dive given the, the responses, given the commentary, given the articles that come across uh, this website, Reddit, but I'm, I'm able to analyze the commentary that's left behind, I'm able to, to code it essentially for its pluses and its minuses, its positives and its negatives, its benefactors, its, its detractors, its attractors and detractors. And the benefactors of those messages, those, the, what the consumer of those messages takes away, what, what a reasonable consumer might take away from that commentary, and and one of them, it's a, it's a subreddit name uh, goes by the name of Anti Work. The subreddit, it's pretty popular. I mean, it, it got popular in in the headlines recently, and that prompted me to take a quick peek see at it and taking a look at it. I realized that obviously some people have a very jaded view of the world. Some people have a very fucked up view of the world. Some people really just don't want to work. They want to take on a parasitic relationship with society and uh, for lack of for, for lack of nicety uh, really just deserve to <laughs> really deserve a mass grave. But uh but that's only because they believe they're entitled to something because, what, they're human? And uh, maybe they might throw some type of religious text in the face of adversity that because they're human, that because they're a, they've are they been created, that they're entitled to, to be endowed with free resources, with, with gifts and with charity. And I think that's a very fucked up view of the world because no one is entitled to anything. Professionally, you have to work to obtain reward. You have to kill, you have to hunt and kill what you eat if you want to eat. If, you have, if you're hungry, you got to go out and seek. Seek and uh, you shall find, right? Now, in this, uh, this anti-work subreddit, there was an, an article of an individual who, who asked uh, something about having to train their replacement. Essentially, corporate had taken upon themselves 
in their ever so nubu- uh, nebulous mind thinking that they're winning the game by hiring someone for a lesser wage and then having the incumbent or the one who is presently in that position, having them train their replacement before letting them go. And, uh, I mean, really, it's just a fucked up situation. Imagine you're working at a place, you're there for, let's say, three, five years even. I mean, that's a fucking commitment. That's a good chunk of your life. For some people, that's a... Shit, for some individuals, that's a whole lifetime, right? You die when you're young, and the good do die young, especially if they're kept innocent, right? But you're there for three to five years and you're expected to train your replacement knowing full well that you won't stick around to benefit from your work any longer. And uh, the shredditor asked, well, what should they do in in this instance? Because obviously it's a fucked up situation. How you make light of it It's a challenge, man. It's a challenge to turn that shitty situation into into something bright, into something worthwhile, something profitable for themselves. And there are a couple of good ideas, but the majority, predominantly the majority, are just a bunch of fucked up individuals that have no professional uh, orientation, that, that have no professional values, that they really don't have uh, an, an honor code, something dignifying, something worthwhile. Like why the like I would, I would fire three quarters of these motherfuckers if I had them working for me, knowing that they're just taking up space. I mean, I do it in a in a somewhat more uh, elaborate fashion, or I would I would. I mean, I, I guess if we're talking equity in a more equitable sense, I'd have them create some kind... I would have them create some kind of technical writing, some kind of technical manual in order to leave behind for the incoming replacement and then just get rid of their fucking ass, fire them, right? Or I'd, I'd hire out some outsider technical writer bring them in have them create a technical manual on the position by observing what the current employee does i mean damn bro like why am i working for corporate the 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 post the original post was about this motherfucker getting let go and feeling sour about it but just but just the way they went about it they were you know genuine asking for advice and the large majority of the responses were just shit, complete shit. So I'm making the mistake and I'm being conscious about it that I'm generalizing everyone, I'm generalizing people by the response that the majority of these shit Redditors commented, right? And that's a bad thing. I'm generalizing the individual I'm oppressing the individual by generalizing with a blanket statement that because three quarters of these Redditors are shit, all Redditors are shit, right? And that's not the case. That's honestly not the case. I think a very good suggestion that was floated across was to negotiate. And nobody ever fucking, I'm not nobody, but three quarters of these fucking Redditors didn't think to negotiate. Negotiate your out. And by that, if you're going to train your replacement, then what you want to do is convert your position. Don't, no longer hourly, no longer salary. If you can muster it, Become a trainer. If they want you to train, become a trainer and charge rates. Charge a consulting rate in order to train. 
given what you know of the company in your position, however fucking high you are, whatever your fucking rank is, you've been there three, five, seven, ten, you were one year away from fucking retirement, how much knowledge you have inside and outside of the operation, not just the one business, not just the one entity, the one organization, but the industry that that organization sits in, depending on how uh, public facing it is. Bro, you got money. Fam, you have money in your fucking brain. You just have to put that shit in a, you have to put that shit in a technical manual or create some technical program to to coach. You be the one to coach. Don't get coached out. You be the one to coach. You be the one to consult. You create the value. You train others to be valuable. That in itself is valuable. You have to hustle the hustle. Motherfuckers get hired on, don't know how to hustle, and yet corporate wants you to teach them how to hustle, fam. Then you have to hustle your hustle. You have to put that game down. You have to put that pimp juice down on paper and pimp it out. Market it. Sell it. That becomes a business process. You could patent that as a business idea. What you do to consult. That could be a trade secret of what goes into the trade, what goes in the industry. Not just that one organization. And I think that was a great idea. That was a great idea. My idea would have been something similar. To negotiate. 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 My idea also includes a little skullduggery. Corporate wants to fire you. You fire back at corporate. I'm not, I'm not being politically correct. Okay? Understand that. Corporate wants to fire you. You fire back at them. A little skullduggery never hurt. A little skullduggery never uh, killed anybody. People kill people. And I'm being funny. I'm being facetious. Skullduggery. <laughs> skullduggery doesn't kill people. People do. <laughs> you, you become the threat. You become the threat. Fuck losing your job. Have them lose you. Have them lose their position. Go over your manager's head. Stir the fucking pot. A, a dollar says that your manager's been lacking somewhere. They've been fucking the game up somewhere. And it's only a matter of you taking it upon yourself, taking the initiative. Corporate loves to see initiative. Corporate hates to see the shit get stirred, though. Corporate hates to see the pot get stirred. But they love when people take initiatives. Why? Because that's some corporate cowboy shit. And if you look after corporate, if you look after business, business will take care of you. You just... You got to handle your shit, man. Got to handle your shit. That's when you want to go back to, what is it? Season three, how to frame your boss, how to frame your manager. Go back and check that shit out. Frame your manager. You could either prop them up or you can knock them down. You be the king maker. Don't fuck around. Negotiate, negotiate, negotiate. You could uh, visit us on Instagram. It's gonna be, it's gonna become uh, active in the coming weeks. So definitely be on the lookout for that. Also, the Patreon is up and running. You want to subscribe to that? By all means, there will be tiers on there: one dollar, three dollars, five dollars, even. But we're gonna try to keep it under five hundred, or I think it's six hundred, the limit. Before the IRS starts sniffing around business. And any donations sent our way, there's a PayPal, there's a Cash App, there's a Venmo. Any and all proceeds will go 
towards business expenses and legal fees in order to keep this podcast nonprofit. The whole operation is nonprofit. Sooner or later, watch. It'll be established a fucking denomination even. Why? Because in God we trust, man. That's what at the end of the day, that's what money's about. You have to trust in the money and the money will take care of you. Don't love the money, man. Don't love the money. But trust it. Trust what it does. Trust how it operates. Honestly, trust what it does to people. And negotiate. 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 Have a nice week.